Okay, we're going to tie up the frog pattern again here this morning. Started the thread. I like using mono cord on this uh, pattern. And then some kind of bright marabou for a tail. Um, John uses rabbit strip tails, which work really well too. So any kind of material, he's putting a little flash in there. Anything you want. And we're going to kind of take that tail and make it about the hook shank or a little bit longer. Tie it in. I like mono. You're going to need a very thick thread for this because it will help you pull everything tight onto the hook shank without breaking the thread. We're going to cut off the excess. And there we go. Next thing we're going to do is tie in a couple of legs. We're just using medium round rubber. Um, we get it from Wopsy. So cutting off the legs. And to do this, I usually loop. If you guys remember, I'll loop the um, legs around the thread. Is really the easiest way to do it. And then lay it right up on top. And then put, I'm going to put another piece in. I like to have double legs and then I can kind of splay them out. Sort of at the midpoint here, we're tying them all in. Get things going. And if you want, you can even sort of figure eight the thread through the legs to sort of help keep them, you know, out. Probably that's probably the hardest part of this fly is just kind of, you know, tying in among the legs because the legs are the first thing you put in. And then I'm going to just go ahead and tie this with, this is closed cell foam. We're just using two strips of contrasting colors. I like green and yellow. And since I'm working on the top, I want the light color to be on the bottom. So we're going to do the green on top and the yellow on the bottom. When you start tying in here, Make sure that your thread is advanced right to the midpoint of the hook. That's the first tie-in point. We're going to have two tie-in points, midpoint of the hook and right up behind the eye. So I'm tying the green in on the top. I'm going to bevel the tail and then put it so it's just overlapping the back of the hook back there. And then take a soft wrap and then a, and another soft wrap and pull down. And then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do the same thing. I've beveled the tip of the yellow and you're just going to stick that right back in until it hits the hook. And then take a soft wrap and another one and just pull tight down on it a little bit. Don't crank too hard. And then the next thing is I need to move my thread up to the eye of the hook, if you remember that. So I'll get it in between the foam and kind of wrap it forward and get up there right in there <clears throat> and then I will I'm going to put a little zap gel in between this will help keep things from rotating on the hook shank the important thing with this stuff is that you not get it on the legs Okay, and once I've got that, what we want to do is we're going to fold these back and we're going to measure them. Make sure you cut them long enough. Right? <laughs> Somebody's laughing at me because they didn't do it last time. Calling her out. Uh, that's right. And <laughs> So we turn that over and then we're going to pull this one back as well and measure it. I like to measure about half of the piece that's underneath it and just get right in there and cut that off. And then you got to make sure that you take your thread and move your thread back to that middle tie-in point before you fold over. And I just take a nice loose wrap and get it lined up in there. And then we're going to push those back over. Bind everything down and then I'm going to take again the soft wraps right at that tie-in point and get everything tied in there. Okay, looking good so far. It's a point where I kind of look at the legs and straighten them out a little bit. Now, when we're here, we're going to tie off, and the easiest way to do that is just to make one 
half hitch knot on there. We're not really trying looking for durability with our knot here. We're just looking to kind of um, go ahead and just make keep the keep the thread from unraveling because we're going to put head cement on this and it's going to hold everything in place. Okay, so clip that off. I like using these 3D pupils or the what we call the Jurassic eyes. They work really well on this. So I'm going to put an eye. on each side. Thank you. One there. And then we're going to put one there. So we've got eyes on each side. And then in this case I think I'll use red. We're going to go ahead and just dot up, you know, decorate the fly a little bit with a little bit of frog type decoration and I'll do it on the bottom as well because that's the part the fish see. Okay, got that done. And then the next thing, I want to get a little bit of, I, I want to just kind of tack some things down here on the fly. So we're going to go right between these pieces of foam and just get a little glue there. And same thing on the underside, whatever, generally whatever you do to the top of the fly, you're going to do to the bottom of the fly. So put a little there. And then I just pinch it down. good time to adjust the legs again you know before everything gets glued down okay so you can see that those flaps are now sticking together and then finally I like to put some glue right down behind here but when you do that make sure that you pull these legs out of the way if you get any super glue on these legs um, they will completely disintegrate and bang push it down the last thing we're going to do, which really is the magic on this whole thing, is to put this um, the UV clear fly finish onto the head of the fly. It's going to seal up the eyes. It'll make a nice hard coating so the fly really splats when it hits the water. Um, it's just going to make it all around a good deal. So start just by applying it to the head, and we're going to lay it on pretty thick. We really want to you know, lay it over the eyes, fill up all the gaps. Stuff is great for this. Once you use the UV clear finish, you will never go back to epoxy if you've ever used epoxy. Because as soon as we hit this with the light, it's going to dry immediately. So what the light looks like, it's just a uh, UV light. We're going to take that and shine it right on there. And just rotate a little bit. Sometimes I'll coat this thing all the way out to the back if I want a super hard shell over the whole thing. In this case, I'm just doing sort of the head to keep the eyes in place. And just keep hitting it. And that is the, we don't even have a name for it, <laughs> the Albemarle Angler Barmer Special Nuclear Frog.